Now we will read the three messages that shall be given in this time. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. That was the first message that shall be given in this time. And then, now we read the second message. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink, drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And now we will read the third message that shall be given in this time. And the third angels follow them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the breath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And then we have also a text here that is a, 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 a added text to <clears throat> the second message. And the second message was about Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the breath of her fornication. And then we follow up with this scripture from Revelation 18.4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not, not be partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her place. So, then this <coughs> message ends with this text in Revelation 14, uh, 12. Here is the patience of the saints, here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So this, these three messages will be preached to all the world, to all nations and all tongues. And everyone they have to take a stand. If they will be loyal to God, to the Creator and keep His commandments and do His will. Or if they will worship the beast and take his image and his mark. So it is very encouraging that God will um, work in the people, his people, so this message can come out to all the world. And already the light has been shine, is shining in different parts of this world, as on this picture. Um, and God's people already, they have started to preach this message on, in many countries and the work will continue. The Lord Jesus will always have a chosen people to serve him. When the Jewish people rejected Christ, he took from them the kingdom of God and gave it to the Gentiles. God will continue to work on this principle. When a church proves and faithful to the work of God or, or the work of the Lord, whatever their position may be, however high and sacred their calling, the Lord can no longer work with them. Others are then chosen to bear important responsibilities. <clears throat> this quote must be something to think about for especially for the leaders in the church. Because here we read that just as the Jewish people rejected Christ, God will and gave it to the Gentiles, God will continue to work on this, to, on this principle. And then we read, when a church proves and faithful to the Lord, 
to the work of the Lord, whatever their position may be, however high and sacred they call him, the Lord can no longer work with them. Others are then chosen to bear important responsibilities. So if not, the people of God that think they are the professed people of God, if not they are faithful to do the work they shall do, to proclaim the last message of grace and warning to the world, then the Lord will use other people to do this work. If ministers and men in position of authority will get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit move upon the minds of the lay brethren, God will direct them what to do for the honor of His, say, His name. Let men have freedom to carry out what, that which the Holy Spirit indicates. Do not put the shackles upon humble men whom God would use. So, it's an appeal to the ministers to not to regulate the work. They shall not say just regulate the workers in this way that they say to one person you shall do this and another person you shall do that. And you shall follow my guidelines, you shall follow my program. But let the, everyone, the lay people, let them work under the guidance of the Holy Spirit spirit and they in this way the Lord will fulfill his work. Laws and rules are being made at the center of the work that will soon be broken into atoms. The Lord does not ask permission of those in responsible positions when he wish, wishes to use certain ones as his agents for the promulgation of truth. Many will be styled by the Spirit of God to break every shackle and assert their liberty in Christ Jesus. So the Lord does not, we do not need to ask for permission for the people in high positions, but we shall break every shackle and assert our liberty in Jesus Christ. And this is in harmony with what we um, read here in Luke 4, 18. Christ is saying this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So, God, He, this is the mission of Christ. He wants to set us free of every, uh, uh, every, um, uh, what we shall say, every rope that is binding us, so we can be free in Him. We shall have liberty in Him, so we can, we can preach the message for this time to the world. We must break every bone. We must break every rope, we must break every shackle that are binding us and we must go out in the liberty of Christ. In the last solemn work few great men will be engaged. They are self-sufficient, independent of God, and He cannot use them. The Lord has faithful servants who in the shaking testing time will be disclosed to view. There are precious ones, no hidden, who have not bowed the knee to, knee to, bow, to bow. So great few great men will be engaged by the Lord in the last part of this world history. Uh, they are self-sufficient, independent of God, and He cannot use it. But it is hidden people in the world that not have stood forward. But when they heard this message that shall be given, it touched their heart and they decide to follow Christ. And if you are one of these people and you see that God is calling you in this time, then open your heart for Christ and confess your sins 
humble yourself before God and ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you and strengthen you in the work you shall do for Him. We feel as if we must belong to some organi organization if we would accomplish good. But John the Baptist did not work on this plan. His mission was to prepare the way for the Messi Messiah by his God-given message and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit he did the work appointed to him without calling to his aid either priest or rabbi. So, in the world today and in most churches, the strategy is like this, that you must ask the leaders. You must be a part of the church. You must be a part of the, of the organization. You must be a part of their plan to give the message. But... John did not work under this influence. He, has, he, 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 he was free in the Lord, so the Holy Spirit could use him for this work. And he did not, he did not go to the priest and to the uh, leaders in the church to ask them for permission, but it was the Holy Spirit that guided him in this work and prepared the way for him. The forerunner of Christ's first advent was a very plain speaking man. He rebuked sin and called things by their right names. He laid the axe at the root of the tree. In this fearful time, just before Christ is to come the second time, God's faithful preachers will have to bear a still more pointed testimony that was borne by John the Baptist. So even though John the Baptist, he rebuked the leaders, the religious leaders, because they were not faithful to God. They went their own way. They did not preach a straight message. And he said to them, uh, oh, what was the word? Um, brood of wipers. Brood of wipers. And he had a very strong message, as we have seen, um, in this uh, program already and we have to bear an even more um, strong message in this last time. So we have to um, reprove, we have to rebuke sin in the, in the church, we have to rebuke and uh, to, um, to uh, uh, Yes, to tell about the apostasy in the church, so people understand that if they shall be saved, they must come out of this apostasy, and they must decide fully to follow Christ and the guidelines we find in the Bible. Just such a work which John the Baptist did is to be carried on in the last days. So we have to give the same striped message for this time. And for this time it is the three angels message that shall be given. And we have heard this message. It's a message of grace and two messages of warning. And the last conclusion of this is that here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you that the Lord will work in this last work in a manner which much out of the common order of things and in a way that will be contrary to any human planning. God will use ways and means by which it will be seen that He is taking the reins in His own hands. The workers will be surprised by the simple means that He will use to bring about the perf perf and perfect His work of righteousness. This is very interesting. It's very encouraging that, um, the, that the Lord will take the reins in His own hand. The leaders, they think that they have the perfect plan to fulfill this work. But they do not give a plain truth, the plain truth uh, to the world. The straight message. And God this will use humble people to fulfill this work. God will take the reins in his own hands, you know. He will guide us in his way so we can uh, just do what he wants us 
to do. And he will use, and he will use simple methods, a simple means to fulfill his work. God will not be left without witnesses. The one hour laborers will be brought in at the eleventh hour and will concentrate their ability and all their entrusted means to advance the work. They will receive their reward for their faithfulness because they are true to principle and shun not their duty to declare the whole counsel of God when those who have had an abundance of life throw off the restraint which the word of God imposes and make void his law. Others will come in and fill their places and take their crowns. Oh, it's very encouraging for the 11 hour workers that they will be brought in in the 11th hour. Perhaps we are in the 11th hour now and God will bring in these people because the, the so-called professed people of God, they have not been faithful in their work. They have not given the message as it should be given. And therefore God will call this the 11th hour workers in, in his work. And they will come in and fill their places and take the leader's crown. The crown of the leaders. Oh, that is something to think about. At the eleventh hour, the Lord will gather a large company out of the world to serve him. There will be a converted ministry. Those who have had privileges and opportunities to become in intelligent in regard to the truth and yet who continue to counterwork the work of God would have accomplished will be purged out. For God accepts the service of no man whose interest is divided. So God will, because the professed people of God have not been faithful, God will take this 11 over workers, many of them, out from the world. When they have listened to the message and they have accepted the message, they will take part to bring this light out to the world. But I speak not my own words when I say that God's Spirit will pass by those who have had their day of test and opportunity, but who have not distinguished the, distinguished the voice of God or appreciated the movings of His Spirit. The thousands in the eleventh hour will see and acknowledge the truth. This is a message to the leaders. They have something to think about. I think that it is very wise if they will stop up and think if they are in harmony with the Bible. If they have been faithful and giving the three angels message to the world. And this quote tells us that they have not done this. I do not say that all not have done it, but most of them have not done their duty. And God's Spirit will pass by those who have had their day of test and opportunity, but who have not distinguished the voice of God or appreciated the movings of His Spirit. And then, we have the last quote here from Ellen Dwight. It's a very encouraging quote for God's people in this last time, this last time of world history. Servants of God, with their faces lighted up and shining with holy consecration, will hasten from place to place to proclaim the message from heaven. By thousands of voices all over the earth, the warning shall be given. Miracles will be brought, the sick will be healed, and signs and wonders will follow the believers. Satan also works with lying wonders, even bringing fire down from heaven in the sight of men. Thus, the inhabitants of the earth will be brought to take their stand. So this message will be given to all the people in the world, and everyone has to take their stand if they will be loyal to God and worship Him that created all things, or if they will be loyal 
to the world leaders and especially the papacy that are behind the new world order and if they will be loyal to God and keep his commandments or if they will keep the spurious Sabbath Sunday. Everyone had to take their stand and may God help you and me so we fully must take our stand on God's side. Let us close with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we have gone through this program with the title Finishers of God's Work. And we understand that many things will be changed in this last time. Uh, many are called but few are chosen. And you are looking to the heart to every man and woman and you will use the people that, that fully will give their lives to you and work for you. I pray that everyone that listen and watch this program, that they must be willing to follow you all the way. So we can be ready when you soon come back again. And also by our preaching that more people can come to your kingdom and be saved. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen.